All right, all right. It's Get Well Wednesday, Heidi. Hello, everybody. Get well, everybody. Here we are. <laughs> hey, Kelly. So much to talk about, you guys. And, you know, Heidi and I, from our experience of the week or the month or what's currently happening, kind of get like inspired to talk to you guys about certain topics because we're like, ah, it didn't come up once. It came up many times. So we had another discussion we're going to talk about later with you guys. It's not going to be today, but uh, definitely, I think if you're someone probably approaching 50 in your 50s into 60, you've probably been having conversations right about like cholesterol or statins or all that sort of thing. Um, that's going to be for later, you guys. Okay, so tuck that away. But definitely, if you're not already follow us, following us, follow us so that you don't miss some of the... Um, the, the juiciness that we share with you guys, kind of like the intel. But today, Heidi, we, uh, Dr. Heidi and I really wanted to talk about this whole, you know, low calorie diet. And I know it's um, not top of mind, meaning top of mind, people are still out there like, I'm vegetarian, I'm keto, I'm like, you're naming yourself, okay? So I, let's just talk food, guys. <laughs> um, and, but uh, the, no matter what kind of diet or food choices you're on, one of the kind of reoccurring themes still, it used to be long ago, and then it's, maybe it's not as talked about, but it still is heavily prevalent, is just low calorie diets. Yeah. No matter what food you're intaking, low calorie uh, so before we jump straight in and you guys kind of get the uh, the lowdown on all that, we'll do a quick introduction for those of you that are new to us. So first of all, say hello wherever you're coming in from and and let us know, are you in Texas, California, or where else in the world are you guys coming in? Yeah, let us know. Awesome. Okay, Heidi, uh, just a quick little intro for people. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Dr. Heidi Aratzable. I'm an ND and certified in functional medicine. Um, I come into health through a sports avenue of trying to better my health, better my performance, better strength, jump higher, long, jump, run longer, all that good stuff, and was able to achieve it at, at a pretty high level. And when I got to the point of retiring, I said, hey, I think everyone could do this. Everyone could feel like this. And so when I retired, I went back to school, acupuncture naturopathic, and then functional medicine in order to bring this information to people. Found Kelly, we paired up because our interests, our desire to support women and aging and overall health and longevity coincides together. And so we work together and we have our Wellness Wednesdays and a lot of other projects outside are, you know, behind the scenes. So uh, that's what, that's me. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, behind the scenes, you guys, I love it. So that is the case actually. And sometimes Heidi and I don't share enough that we have some women's programs, small, big, um, how serious are you to commit to your health? So we have programs for you. If you are ever interested, just drop programs below or reach out to Dr. Heidi or myself privately. And we're happy to have a bigger discussion because we all can live this amazing life, but we do need to know our roadmap, our details, the data behind it. So we can set a plan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my background is over uh, 25 years as a physical therapist. Also, you know, was an athlete growing up. I absolutely have loved helping people, but I really realized in my journey these past 10 years from transitioning to 40 to 50 is people need to learn how to be well and thrive and be vibrant. And I saw people get older, sicker, not taking care of themselves, always relying on our medical system. And what I know now is, yes, we can't stop aging, but you certainly can do many, many things to optimize your health at a cellular level so that you don't have to just say, oh, I just am getting older. You guys, there's just so much you can do. And uh, that's why Heidi and I come here every week to provide you guys some great information. Absolutely. And have a lot of fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. A community of uh, really awesome people. So with that, um, Heidi, we're going to jump right in, you guys, and just spend a few moments. If you know Heidi and I, we won't be on here for an hour. We just like to come in and give some hot tips but this misconception of if I eat less calories, so lower calories, I, I have to lose weight. Like, of course, I just need to, you know, of course, that's going to be the way I'm going to lose weight. And you might think, well, yes, you can't stay on that. But it's not just staying on it or not. Like your body actually adapts to it because it's smart. 
So Heidi, jump in because you started with several conversations with women this week. Um, and maybe some of the misconceptions they're thinking or you're hearing, and then we'll mm -hmm. kind of get into the demystifying why. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, you know, several times this week and, and more than usual, I get this all the time, but more than usual this week. So that put, definitely put it on my radar. I said, the universe is asking me to talk about this, right? Uh, is, well, I'm not losing weight and I'm on, on a low calorie diet. Like, wait, wait what? What, why are you on a low calorie diet? <laughs> when did this, because here it is, low calorie diets are largely proven to be inefficient, not effective, and actually can cause further weight gain and, un, and poor health if sustained over a long period of time, malnutrition. You could be in America with plenty of food and still be malnourished. And so this is the problem. This is the things that happen and the misconceptions about it. Yet it's still one of the things that people go to, to think they, uh, they want to lose weight is just lowering their portions. But what that, what happens if, if I can go into that, Kelly is like, yeah, no, go right into you... that, you guys, because this is, this, this is the key, right? And, and yeah. I, as, as Heidi's jumping right in, think about that if you're eating less food, then you're not even allowing the proper nutrients to get into your body to do the work. And what you're eating probably isn't just plates full of like broccoli and blueberries and, you know, <laughs> tons of protein, right? <laughs> Anyways, however, all right. So yeah, Heidi, what's happening in the body? Yeah. So number one thing is when you reduce your calories, your metabolic rate, so the thing that burns through those calories and, and recruits fat for energy and makes energy in your body, that metabolic rate slows down because there aren't that many calories to burn. So it goes into a bit of a starvation mode, a fight or flight, uh, a stress mode, because it's concerned about fuel going out and not enough fuel going in. And so a compensatory mechanism or a balancing mechanism that the body has within itself is try to balance that out, you know, what's going on there. And it slows down that metabolic rate. And so in that survival mode, 